What's up guys, Chris Majestic here. I wanna do a really late CES 2019 video. I do apologize, but it's been a really crazy week and I'm still recovering from last week. Anyways, this year was my first time at CES and I have to say that it was absolutely amazing. There's so much to see with tens of thousands of exhibits and there's just no possible way to see everything. Either way, I wanna share my experience with you guys and show you some of the cool things that I saw. Now I'll try to keep it short, but there's a lot I wanna mention, including some new projectors and TVs, so try to stay to the end if you can. So my first stop was LG's booth, and man, I was definitely not expecting such a crazy futuristic welcome. So they had a huge entryway full of curved screens and mirrors, giving you the feeling of warping into a new dimension. It was so impressive that I think I took a video of it every single time I walked by it. Now one of the first things I saw was LG's new OLED TVR, which is basically a roll-up TV that comes out of what looks like a big soundbar. Now aside from the TV having having a nice image, it was really cool and definitely an attention grabber. Now of course 8K was the main focus from the big TV manufacturer, so LG had their 8K OLED on display, which probably had the best picture I've ever seen. And LG also has a 4K ultra short throw projector that they'll be releasing later this year. Now I will be doing a separate video on this with more information, but this is the LG HU85L 4K ultra short throw laser projector, and it can produce a 90 inch screen from just two inches away from the wall and a 120 inch screen from only seven inches away. Now the price is undecided so far, but I'm expecting it to be under $5,000, hopefully a lot lower. So LG isn't the only projector company coming out with a new projector. I also had the pleasure of stopping by Optima Showroom and they're also releasing a new 4K ultra short throw laser projector later this year known as the Optima P1. They're also releasing a new GT1080 replacement called the GT1080 HDR, which is boasting a whopping 4,000 lumens of brightness, an impressive eight milliseconds input lag, support for 120 frames per second, and even has support for HDR signals even though it's a 1080 projector. Now I'll be uploading a separate video about these projectors really soon so watch out for those if you're interested. And ViewSonic also has a new 4K projector coming out this year. So this is the X10, a 4K short throw projector with a 2400 lumen LED light source. It has Wi-Fi connectivity and will allow you to stream video from Netflix and YouTube. This is definitely one of the brightest LED projectors I've ever seen and I look forward to getting my hands on it for a review. Okay, over at the Samsung booth, one of the first things we were met with is what Samsung calls the wall. So this is a 219 inch 4K micro LED screen. Micro LED meaning that you can place multiple small panels together to form whatever size screen you want, including this massive 219 inch here. And with amazing black levels and awesome color, this is pretty impressive. And I think projected manufacturers better watch out if this thing goes mainstream at anywhere near an affordable price. Now, of course, Samsung also showed off their 8K QLED TVs, and I have to say that I was really impressed with the picture. Now, I couldn't really decide if I liked LG's OLED or Samsung's QLED better, but I'm leaning more towards the OLED because the images just seem to pop off the screen. So Samsung also has some pretty good demonstrations of their 8K upscaling, and considering there's pretty much no 8K content out there, this is probably one of the most important features that I'd like to see on an 8K TV. Making regular TV look better would be awesome, and considering how good the demo looked, I'd love to see how well it works in the real world. Another cool display at Samsung's booth was what Samsung calls the frame. So it basically looks like a typical picture frame with a painting, but it's hiding a really cool secret. So it's actually a TV, so it's a painting when it's turned off, but a TV when it's turned on. Now I'm not sure how practical this would be, but it's pretty cool stuff if you ask me. I also stopped by Sony's booth and I got a chance to see their new 8K HDR TV known as the Z9G. So aside from amazing picture quality, it has some really nice speakers built into it. And what's cool is that it allows you to use those speakers as a dedicated center channel speaker if you have a home theater set up. I think this is a nice approach to keeping the action as close to the screen as possible. And considering how hard horrible TV speakers have been over the past few years, I think it's a really cool idea. And speaking of getting your sound as close to the TV as possible, how about your sound actually coming from out of the screen? Well, believe it or not, that's actually a thing. So Skyworth has an OLED TV that actually emits crystal clear sound right out of the TV screen itself, which was sort of amazing. Now, I'm not sure how practical it would sound for a movie or a TV show, but it did seem to work pretty well. 
And there were also a few new soundbars that I'm pretty excited about. So Sennheiser is releasing a new soundbar known as the Ambio. Now I'll likely be uploading a separate video about this, but this is a 13 speaker Dolby Atmos soundbar that has a built-in subwoofer as well as built-in surround speakers. Now I was a bit skeptical about real surround sound coming out of this thing, but I was definitely impressed by how well it filled the room. But what's awesome is that unlike other soundbars, it actually has a subwoofer pre-out so you can actually add your own subwoofer if you want. So the Ambio will launch sometime in May and it'll be priced around $2,500. And Klipsch is also releasing a few new soundbars this year. They have a range of soundbars from 40 inches all the way up to 54 inches. And the largest soundbar, which is the one that I'm most interested in, is the 54A, which is their new 54 inch Dolby Atmos soundbar, which will be priced somewhere around $1,600, even though the pricing isn't concrete yet. Now, of course, Google had to make a huge name at CES with their own separate building, which had a smart home downstairs that they used for demos with a roller coaster ride upstairs. And Google was even giving away free prizes from a giant gumball machine as long as you were willing to stand in line for over two hours. So it looks like VR is alive and kicking at CES, and I had the opportunity to play with some really cool VR tech and even some augmented reality stuff that I don't have any video of, but considering how popular VR is right now, it's apparent that it's not going anywhere anytime soon and it's only getting better. Now, if there's one thing that CES isn't short of, it's definitely robots. I mean, we're talking a lot of robots. From manufacturing robots, robot dogs, dancing robots, singing robots, to walking, talking robots that open doors, welcome you home and get you a Coke from the fridge, and even some chips, there was definitely lots of cool robot technology. There was even a ping pong robot that had some pretty good skills. And Bosch even had a robot lawnmower that's waterproof, keeps itself charged and even knows when it's raining and the grass is wet. And one of the coolest pieces of AI technology I saw was a crowd imaging system that could not only detect bodies and faces, but behavior as well as sex and age. And there were a bunch of companies focused on autonomous mass transit vehicles as well as luxury vehicles. There was even a flying taxi which basically looks like a giant drone that can carry a few people around. So after walking over 50 miles and seeing a ton of what CES has to offer, I can officially say that I thoroughly enjoyed it. There was lots of cool tech and I wish I could fit it all in one video, but considering I didn't even see it all myself, it's definitely not possible to fit it all in a video. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I can't wait to go to CES 2020 next year so I can come back and share even more cool stuff with you guys.